This is part seven of section 4.3. If we are given that cosine of t is equal to 1 sixth and that sine of t is negative, we're going to find sine of t, okay? So we know our answer should be a negative number, which is good. Um, we need a relationship between cosine and sine. I need something that I'll be able to solve for sine given that I just know a cosine value, okay? And if I'm looking at my identities, I don't ha need have a reciprocal function that correlates sine and cosine, so that's not going to be useful. Here, I do have sine and cosine together, but without knowing a tangent or cotangent value, I'm not going to be able to solve this for our sine. So what we need to look at specifically are our Pythagorean identities. Okay, so here I have a cosine squared, I have sine squared, and I have a 1. I can solve this for sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this identity and plug in these values. So what do I know? I know that 1 sixth squared, cosine squared, plus sine squared is equal to 1. So what I have here is 1 over 36 plus sine squared of t is equal to 1. So sine squared of t is equal to, if you subtract, you get 35 over uh, 36. Okay, now to find out just sine, I need to take the square root of both sides, which gives me sine of t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 35 over 36, which is plus or minus the square root of 35 over 6. So my sine value can be two different answers if this is cosine. Here's our extra bit of information. We want our sine value to be negative. So the sine value we are looking for is negative square root 35 over 6. Okay, so if we are given that our secant value is negative 5 and our tangent value is negative, we need to find tangent. Okay, so do we have one that relates secant and tangent that we'll be able to solve for? And here we have secant squared and tangent squared. So this problem is going to work pretty much the same way this problem did. Okay, so I have 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. Okay, so what I have here is 1 plus tangent squared of t is equal to 25. So tangent squared of t is equal to 24. If you take the square root of both sides, you get tangent of t is equal to either plus or minus the square root of 24, algebraically. Now we want the negative answer. And you should write your answer in your radical in simplified form. So this is the same thing as negative square root, uh, negative two square root six. Let me write that a little bit better. That's the answer they're looking for. Okay. Given that cotangent of t is equal to 4 and cosecant of t is negative, find cosecant of t. We have one relating cosecant and cotangent, so we're simply going to plug in to this identity. And what I will have is 1 plus 4 squared is equal to cosecant squared of t. So I have cosecant squared of t is equal to 1 plus 16 
so 17. Therefore, cosecant of t could be equal to either positive or negative square root of 17. Now, this is a prime number, so it does not simplify at all. Now, what, what are we looking for, the positive or the negative answer? We're looking for the negative answer. And so we get negative square root 17. Okay, now if our tangent is negative 3 and our secant is positive, we need to find secant. Okay, so secant and tangent are related here. So I plug in, I have 1 plus negative 3 squared is equal to secant squared. So secant squared is equal to 1 plus 9, so it's 10, which means that secant of t is equal to either plus or minus the square root of 10, and the square root of 10 does not simplify. We're looking for the positive answer. So they want your answer to be the square root of 10. Okay. Now, given that cosecant of t is equal to negative 6 and cosine is positive, we're asked to find cosine. Okay, so do we have something that relates cosecant and cosine? Um, no. And this, is, this reciprocal function goes with sine. So what if I use the reciprocal function? This will tell me that sine of t is equal to negative 1 sixth because that's the reciprocal identity. Now, I do have a Pythagorean identity that relates sine and cosine. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So if I'm plugging this in, I have cosine squared of t is equal to negative 1 over 6. Uh, not equal, um, sorry, plus. Not equal to. Squared is equal to 1. So I have cosine squared of t plus 1 over 36 is equal to 1. So cosine squared of t is equal to 35 over 36 when I subtract over. So cosine of t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 35 over the square root of 36, which is 6. And we want the positive answer. So what they are looking for is positive square root 35 over 6. Okay. Now let's talk about a situation where we have something like this. The relationship between a positive t value and a negative t value. We are eventually going to be um, graphing these things and it becomes very useful to know whether your function is an even function or an odd function. Meaning if you plug in a negative value instead of a positive value, how does that change your overall answer? Even functions sort of absorb the negative. If I plug in negative x or secant of x, then I'm still going to get a positive value. It is exactly the same. And if you look at that here, we know about um, symmetry. So we know if I have this point, I also have this point. Cosine and secant are based on your x values, and your x value is positive in both of these possibilities. Okay, And if your t values end up here and here, then they are both either going to have the same sign as well. Okay, So it doesn't change anything. Now, odd functions, sine, tangent, cosecant, cotangent, all of these require using a negative y if you plug in, if you use a negative angle. And that just changes the overall sign. So 
Your cosine and secant values absorb a negative. So if you have a negative in the argument of the function, you can just make it go away. And if you're dealing with an odd function, you can simply put a negative in the front. So this means that we may not have to go through and find all of the a, a coterminal angle that, that we like better. Okay, so let's talk about finding the exact value of sine of negative 30 degrees. Okay, well, sine of negative 30, sine is a negative, in, inside here it is an odd function, so this will be exactly the same as negative sine of 30 degrees. And sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So this is negative 1 half. Okay. Now let's find secant of negative 960 degrees. Okay, secant is an even function, so I can simply drop that negative. Okay, now since this is larger than 360, we do need to find a coterminal angle for it, so we can find our reference angle and so on and so forth. So 960, subtracting 360 until you find a number that is small enough, 240. So this is the same as secant of 240 degree angle. Okay, so now we need to find our reference angle. 240 is right here. It is in quadrant three, okay? And we're looking for secant and secant is negative in this quadrant, okay? So I know I'm gonna have a negative answer. 240 minus 180 is going to give me my reference angle. Okay, and that gives me a reference angle of 60 degrees. So secant of a 60 degree angle that is one over cosine of a 60 degree angle. Cosine of a 60 degree angle is one half. So the reciprocal of that will be two. Okay, so now I just need to figure out whether it should be positive or negative. This was in quadrant three, it should be negative. So the answer they're looking for here is negative two.